today we're going to be drawing a model of this wheel, the longboard wheel of the cult creator. And the idea is that we can make a mini longboard wheel out of it for a model. Okay, so when you go to Onshape and you've registered and everything, you create a document. And because it's free, it's got to be a public document, so this will be something anybody can see. The way we're actually going to produce this wheel is we're going to draw the profile, which is the outline of the actual wheel, and then we're going to rotate it around 100 and, uh, 360 degrees to get. So here we are in one shape. I'm not going to do a detailed tutorial. I'm just going to show how I work. So the first thing we want to do is to click here to choose the axis. So you can always choose which axis you want to work with. You can also right click to, to navigate around. That's a very useful tip. And the other useful tip is to press control and right click to, to pan around. Those are very useful things. Now on shape things start out with sketches. A sketch is basically a drawing. And then you really do just sketch it like you would sketch something with a piece of paper. So when you go into sketch, you have to say where I'm going to sketch, what's my piece of paper. In this case, it's going to be the front plane. So I'm actually selecting this thing here, and that is now my sketch plane. I'm going to start out doing some lines. So in Onshape, you draw lines, and the inside of a wheel, of a longboard wheel, is actually hollow. So obviously the axle has to go through something. So it means you don't start drawing on the axis here. You start drawing a little bit away. This might be a little bit hard to follow, but I'm going to draw the profile of a wheel based on how I understand it. So the first thing is you've got this bit here which goes along and that covers the spacer. I already noticed that the workspace units are in the wrong units, so I want to work in millimeters and in kilograms. One shape doesn't seem to remember this, so I have to redo it for every, for every uh, drawing. So we've got this line here. Let's continue with our sketch. Now, somehow we're out of sketch mode, so we just double click on the sketch and we're back into sketch mode here. So then we've got a little bit here, a little bit here, then we've got something that goes along like that, then we've got the start of the actual wheel going this way. Now, as we come back in, if we move slowly enough, we get the actual alignment there, which is really good. And let's go down some more. Ah, that won't make much sense to you yet. But this is the profile of the wheel, and if we spin this around, we get a wheel. Now, I'm going to do that quickly, just so you get a feel for what we're doing. Um, ah, before I do that, I need to make a line here. So we're going to need another line, and this is the line where our wheel is going to actually spin around. So this is the axis here. And that line, because it's not a physical line, we should just turn it into a construction line here. So we can, I think you need both tools active, and then you get a center line. So that's now a center line. Take the revolve tool. When, usually in Onshape, when you have a tool, you have to select certain things. So you can sort of pre-select your part, or you can select it afterwards. So now, by clicking here and clicking here, I'm telling it that I want to resolve this, uh, revolve this sketch. And then by clicking here and clicking on my construction line, I tell it I want to revolve it around. And now we see that we've got something that looks like a wheel. Looks more like an orangutan wheel at the moment. So let's go back into our sketch because there's a whole lot of stuff which we haven't done yet. One of the things is, if you look at these wheels, they've got a rounded edge. So the profile is rounded. I haven't actually measured it, but I'm going to use a, it's called a fillet. Click here, click here, and it gives me a nice five millimeter fillet, which I think looks okay. And the inside, I'm going to also put a fillet, but I'm not going to make it so big. I'm going to make a one millimeter fillet. And from there to there, I'm going to make a one millimeter fillet. Now, already on shape, it's not quite doing what I wanted to do, so we need to start dimensioning here. According to the website, this wheel has a contact patch of 
shall we call it 30 millimeters. So what we do is we click on dimension, we click here, and we set this to 30 millimeters. That's now uh, made our wheel a bit more realistic. Oh, sorry, no, that's completely nonsense. All right, this will be the contact patch here. So let's set this to 30 millimeters. This distance here, we'd have to measure. My wheels is a bit, a bit more worn down than a new one. It's about 10 millimeters. So let's double click on here and put in 10. Now we can already see things are getting screwed up down here. Okay, the next thing is the diameter of the wheel. The diameter of the wheel is 70 mil, I think, 72. So that means that the radius from here to here, no, that's not helping. From here, this is also a bit tricky, trying to get a dimension from another line. No. Okay, that was pretty frustrating, but I think I figured it out. Apparently, you cannot do a dimension from a center line, which is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. You can, however, dimension from an axis. So I can select the axis and then the outside of the wheel. And we said that will then be 72 diameter, 36 mil. So that wheel should now have the right um, dimension. Now, I'm going to have to dimension this here so the bearings fit, and that probably means I'm going to have to delete this center line, which is a bit of a pity because I'm going to need that for my rotation. Uh, maybe if I can just move it out the way a bit. We might have some luck with dimensioning these guys. So this needs to be 11 mils. Somehow there is some weird entity here. I'm not sure what it is, and I can't select. Oh, it's frustrating. I have to select that and that and make that 11 mil. Okay, and the spacer needs to fit inside there, so I'm going to just make this a small indent of about. And now we've pretty much got our wheel. So we've got our wheel here now, and we want to make the holes in the middle. That's going to need a new sketch. So I've just clicked new sketch here, and I need to select the face. So this face is going to be my sketching face. I now need to draw some holes, or I can just draw one hole. So I'm going to draw one here. I'm going to dimension it at 7 mil. I'm going to move it down a bit. And now I'm going to use this funky tool called Pattern. So a linear pattern, and now we want circular pattern. It makes us three holes in a circle, which is cool. Put in 10, it makes 10 holes, which is awesome. If we put in 12, it does that, which is not awesome. I don't know why, so we're going with 10. Right, so that's what we want. We've got 10 holes. Now, why did we... Well, they're not holes, they're circles at the moment. Uh, let's complete that sketch. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude these through the wheel to make holes. So that's this tool here, the extruder. So it's already picked up which sketch. I'm going to change the name of the sketch actually, so we know that it's the circles. And this extrusion is going to be the holes. I'm sure there's a better name for that. Now, this is what we want. We don't want to add material, we want to remove material. So that's going to now remove material. And it's not really easy to see if it's working or not. You can see it's actually extruding in the wrong direction at the moment, so let's go in the other direction. And now we should maybe, maybe, maybe have holes in the thing. Let's click OK. And it has worked. There's different ways of extruding, and I won't go into all of them here. But we now have a wheel which has holes in it. That's awesome. The only other thing left to do on this is to make it look pretty. Oh no, wait. I want to print this with an Ultimaker 3, and I want to print it in two different colors, which means I have to split this wheel into two different colors so that I have the two different parts. The way to split this wheel is to have a cylinder which goes around this line and splits the wheel. It took me a while to figure out how to do this. We need a new sketch. I'll call this the cylinder or let's call it the split circle. Now, sketch plane has got to be the top plane. I tried using one of these things as a sketch plane. It doesn't work. You cannot extrude properly. So we've got that circle now. Let's hide the part, and if we, oh, I haven't finished the sketch, let's do the actual sketch, we need the part to be visible. I'm going to make this part translucent now, so we can see a bit better, and I'm going to draw from the center to somewhere around there. Now, it would be wonderful if it snapped here, it does seem to snap, actually it does snap, so let's that's our circle now. So if I hide the part, we can see there's our circle. And that we're going to extrude now to make our cylinder. How do we do that? We click on Extrude. We click on our split circle. No. That's incorrect. If you do that, it won't work. Um, because we want actually a surface extrusion. We don't want to extrude a solid cylinder, we want to extrude a empty cylinder. And there it becomes difficult because now it doesn't want you to select a sketch, it wants you to select a part. So if you are pretty good with a mouse, you get the edge of the split circle, which is the line around that split circle. Now, we want our extrusion to go through the whole wheel. How do we get it to do that? It's actually kind of hard to see what the heck it's doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the wheel and go to the, is it the top? No. Where's the front view? Oh, come on. Front view, please. If we show our part here, we can see it's extruding from there up that way. So that is not enough to split the part. We want the cut to go all the way through the entire part. So what I do is I take a symmetric one and you can sort of see where it is there. It's gone up 25 and down 25. We're going to just tell it to go 80. And now that cylinder is definitely cutting through the whole wheel. You could probably bring it a bit smaller. You don't need the full length. But I tell you, if you don't have enough length, it will not split. So we're going to call this the split cylinder and say OK. And now we are able to split our part using this tool here. So first select your part, select the part, and then say split, and then click here and say cylinder. And now it has split the part into two. Friggin' awesome. Cool, so now we've got our wheel split into two parts, 
Uh, you can't really see that split into two parts yet. I will show you how to visualize that. First thing is we're going to actually the first thing is the last thing is we are going to wait. How does it work? Right, click on the part. Ah. Oh, wait, let's complete the split, sorry. Now we can right click on the part and say edit appearance. Choose a nice purple. It's a bit interesting that ah, it looks like I split a bit too far and we picked up some of this here. So Hmm. That means our split circle is too wide. So let's go to the. How do we do this? Let's go to the front view again. No, front view. Top view. Top view. Let's go into our split circle sketch, which is currently hidden actually. Double click on it. Zoom in, hide the part, and let's resize this guy. How are we going to do that? We could do it with a dimension. Let's click there, and it's just got to go down a fraction. So let's take it to 44. We should probably be able to work it out from our from our initial sketch. And now what I'm hoping is Yeah, that's looking good. Awesome. So now let's take our part number two. Actually let's call this the core. And let's call this the thane. And now we're going to take the thane. And we're going to change its color to a nice green. That is not a nice green. So let's go to the mixer and pick something a bit more fun. Just checking out my wheel here. Something like that. And that's our wheel. So now we've got it. Um, in order to print this, we would have to export both models. So let's export the core as an STL. So we'll call it Cult Wheel Core. Um, take a nice file resolution and export it. So we've got that file now and the plane also we would want to export. Those two models can be loaded into Cura and then printed together. So it'll actually print the both at the same time. In fact, for my model, I'm going to use a different color. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, OnShape's a pretty rad tool. It's kind of finicky, but yeah. Who am I to complain? It's free. Thanks for watching.